This is the most dramatic recruitment in college football history. I'm Brandon Olson, and we are here to find out who will get the final rows of the number one overall player in the 2023 high school class. The recruit's name is Arch Manning, and he is one of the most talented high school players that we have ever seen. I'm ready to do all that I can to help Arch find a school that will get him everything he's ever wanted. For his only two-on-one meeting of the evening, Arch heads to Athens to meet with the defending national champions, the Georgia Bulldogs. Arch, my friend, come to Georgia. It's, we're not here to tell you how to live your life. Here's what I will say. I will say that we just won the national championship, maybe you've heard of it, with Stetson Bennett as our quarterback. Oh, that's interesting. Let me, let me just ask you, mm. Arch, what do you think could be accomplished with you at the quarterback mm. position? That's, that's all I got. Point, point one, we are those guys already. And could you imagine what your personal accolades would be joining already greatness? That's fantastic. Arch, I'm going to give you a second reason. And much has to do with exactly what we just said with Stetson Bennett and the ability that Kirby Smart has to trust one Todd Munkin. Yes, hmm. that's who we have as our offensive coordinator Arch, I don't know if you've heard of him. Let me try to show you, just showcase the amazing ability that he has to take maybe middling talent and bring them up to top talent. Oklahoma State, not a good football school. Let's be honest. We can be real for a second. While I don't he think was you're considering them. I don't think you're considering no, you're, them. If that's, that's. We took a bunch of, he took a bunch of kids on that team that had no business in the NFL. And you know what he did? He shoved them in the NFL. Now, mm. that's taking talent that is not there and developing it and coaching it to that ability. Now, imagine what he could do if you start with raw talent to the, I don't know, level that maybe the best quarterback in this cycle has. Arch, mm. could you imagine then what happens if you take a guy who takes a little and makes the most out of it? If you have a lot, he can take incredible Kirby Smart trusted him to make the decision on who was going to be the best quarterback for our system, for our team. Todd Munkin is NFL ready. He went from Oklahoma State, and then he was a head coach, uh, collegiate level as well. But he was not only that, he was the offensive coordinator for NFL teams. And the only reason he's not there anymore and Georgia came running around is because the head coaching of those teams that he was a part of were gone. And when that happens, wholesale firings happen. But he brings NFL vernacular, language, attitude and mentality straight to Georgia. So not only are we the national championship, we are those guys, but we have, and I'll say it and I'll fight anybody, the best offensive coordinator in the entire SEC in Todd Munkin, who could be your personal coach running an offense that is shifting, shifting back to more of what today's college is, which is not a, not a dual threat quarterback arch. That's, we don't have those anymore. They're quarterbacks. Let's, just a quarterback. Let's talk for a moment, if we could, about choices. <clears throat> now, we all have choices that we have to make in, in our life. Let's talk about some of your choices. Um, this, is really, this is really two schools that we're talking about here, Arch, because, be real. because I know and you know that nobody with any talent is having anything to do with the University of Texas these days. Nobody, you're not going to go there. Ain't nobody going to go. They're not ever going to win anything. Do you understand what I'm it's, saying? I know. It's okay. Just between us, we know you have to visit, you, but we know. You know, and I know. So we're just going to eliminate non-contenders. Yeah. Off the yeah. table. People who've not won a national championship since Vince Young and Mac Brown were roaming the sidelines. And who won't win a national championship for the next decade minimum. Good Lord have mercy. Now, um, Alabama, Georgia. Mm. In many ways, you could say it's a it's a it's a it's an even comparison. There's a lot of there's a lot of good things that both schools have. Alabama certainly in recent history 
has dominated the college football landscape. But um, right. you're not doing State Farm commercials like Uncle Peyton. You're not a historical quarterback, Arch. You understand mm. what I'm saying? You are a quarterback in the now. And not just now, but next year and the year after and the year after that. Now, let oh, me ask that. you, which coach is most likely to n not still be here in those which, in three years from now? Which, which one, coach which one doing this is on the way up? I has never won a national championship in his 70s. He is um, going to be in his 70s for the entire tenure of uh, your collegiate career. So I want to go with the guy who is um, who, who's current. Who's ready now? And maybe you don't want to hitch your wagon to the Alabama train where, yes, you can go there. You can win yourself a Heisman Trophy. You can have all sorts of great things. And then Stetson Bennett will beat you in the national championship game, Arch. That's just what's going to happen if we can be honest. Come to Georgia. Georgia, Athens. Kirby Smart. Todd Munkin, reigning national champions. I don't know what else you need to hear, but listen, Georgia is the obvious choice. And so I, I, Daniel, we implore Daniel, you. I'm going to hit you with two more, two more. So we've, we've chronicled oh. that we are those guys. We're going up. We have the mm -hmm. guy. We have two of the guys. We have Kirby Smart. We have Todd Munkin. We have the Ascension. We have all the talent. We have the facilities. But two things we also have up on Alabama – yeah, you've been to the classic city, Arch. I know you have. Okay. Oh yeah. Now, now I defy you. Find one person in America that is not a Crimson Tide rider who would ever say that Tuscaloosa and Athens are comparable as college cities. They're not. They are. They are polar opposites. Tuscaloosa has one thing good in it, and that is Nick Saban. That's it. I have ended the list. Other than that, it's a, correct. It's a whole. Okay, it's a whole. Athens, on the other hand, everything you want for your college experience. It's the best college town in America, and I'll fight anybody. The second thing I'm going to tell you, Arch, I'm just going to give you some names. Who do you think you want to be on this list of names? Do you think Brody Croyle? Greg McElroy, Tua Tungavailoa, Jalen Hurts, or Mac Jones. That's one list. And then I'm just going to do. He said Brody Croy. <laughs> I'm going to do one list, one name Matthew Stafford. You decide. What? You decide if you want to be a Hall of Famer or you want to be a flame out in two years in the NFL because I know we have the quarterback pedigree for all those reasons and more. Find your way but, over to the Bulldogs. We but Clint, he you. probably needs to go to Alabama in order to draft it into the NFL, don't you, Arch? Don't you? Isn't that your talent is not good enough? Is that what is that is that correct? You need if, to go and play under Nick Saban in order to. What if forty six million guaranteed? What does that do for you, Arch? Number one overall oh, pick. What does that do for hard you? Hard to hard to say. Listen, Arch, it's been a fun it's been a fun chat that we've had with you. Um, I guess we could summarize it maybe in one in one statement. It would be come to Georgia or don't. Because as I mentioned earlier, we won the national championship with Stetson Bennett. It's not it's not really going to impact Georgia either way, but it does have the potential to be the best decision that you ever make, Arch. And so uh, we'll see you in Athens. Arch Manning has said that he thought Athens was the best college town, so it's safe to say that they earned the first impression rose. But will that be enough? We'll hear from other contestants in just a minute, but first we are going to hear from Built Bar, because if you're ever stuck making a tough decision about your diet, Built Bar is there for you, coated in 100% chocolate just 130 calories, just four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Built Bar is the best protein bar you can get. They have Built Puffs, which are basically protein marshmallows, and they are delicious. Check out their newest birthday cake flavored Built Puff. It is fantastic. Use Locked 
15 to get 15% off of your next order. That is L O C K E D 1 5 to get 15% off of your next order with built or builtbar.com. For our second meeting, we have our first one on one meeting of the evening. Arch Manning will head to Austin, Texas, where he meets with the Texas Longhorns. Let's check in on how things are going. Arch Manning, you need to come to the University of Texas. I'm Jonathan Davis, the host of Locked On Longhorns. And the reason you need to come to the University of Texas is because Texas is back, baby. Or at least we will be when you sign on the dotted line and announce that you are coming to the 40 acres. See, it's been a while since Texas could say that we're back. I think the last time we heard it was when Sam Ellinger said it after we beat the Georgia Bulldogs in the Sugar Bowl. May or may not be relevant to this video. And I understand, Arch, that you have some concerns about this Texas football program. So in the name of Southern hospitality, we went out of our way to make sure that we alleviated those concerns for you. I know you were watching last year and said, this is a five and seven football team. Is that really where I want to spend my college days? Sark heard that. He said, you know what we need? 30 new football players. And guess what he did, Arch? He brought in 30 new football players. And I get it. You were watching this Texas team last year, looking at this offensive line, and you're saying, do I want to be running for my life in college behind that offensive line? Sark heard you. So what did he do? He brought in the number five recruiting class in the country, headlined by the two five-star offensive linemen, Devin Campbell and Kelvin Banks, brought in seven new offensive linemen total in the 2022 all-gas, no-breaks recruiting class. And I get it. The SEC puts the most draft picks in the NFL. The SEC has the best brand in college football. All of your schools outside of Texas are in the SEC. Your uncles played in the SEC. And so you're thinking, you want to play in the SEC. Now, this one was tough. We had to pull a few strings. A surprise. We're headed to the Southeastern Conference. Yes, Texas and that other school, Oklahoma, whatever, we're headed to the SEC. So no worries there. And when I thought about your other options, I'm like, they seem cool. But they're not the University of Texas. And when I thought about the other cities that you may or may not be going to, I said they seem cool, but they're not Austin. Let's talk about the Bulldogs. So at first I heard that you were interested in going to Athens. And I said, why go all the way to Greece when you could come to Texas? But then I realized they were talking about Athens, Georgia. Seems cool, but it's not Atlanta. And do you really want to go to a school that relies on the defense and the running game? Do you want to be a game manager, Arch? Or do you want to be a superstar? So let's cross Georgia off the list. Alabama, they concern me a little bit. Nick Saban has a good thing going down there. One of the most well-run programs in college football. But do it look like the players have fun down there? Is there anything to do in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? And doesn't it look like at the first sight of you even having fun, cracking a smile, Nick Saban's going to yell at you? Do you want to get yelled at for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I mean, after all, you're going to college. You want to be able to, you know, get your football, get your education, but have fun too. You want to be able to turn up. And we all know Sark likes to... Back to the football. They've had a lot of good quarterbacks at Alabama recently. Bryce Young, Mac Jones, Tua Tungabailoa, and Jalen Hurts. Now, I know it sounds like I'm making a case for you to go to Alabama, but with all of those great quarterbacks, you would be just another guy, Arch. A Jag. You don't really seem like a Jag type of guy to me. You seem like more of a... Lambo, brother. We have Lambos at Austin. Just ask B. John Robinson. I know quarterback development is important to you. You want to be great, Arch. We want you to be great. And who better to do that than one of the best quarterback whispers in college football? I mean, 
let's just look at his resume. Quarterbacks that have been taken in the first round under Steve Sarkeesian's watch. Carson Palmer, Matt Leiner, Mark Sanchez, Jake Locker. Jake Locker. Tua Tungavailoa, Mac Jones. And I think it's safe to say that we can add two quarterbacks to that list. Quinn Ewers, highest graded quarterback at the University of Texas since Vince Young. And then his successor, Arch Manning. That's right. If you come to the 40 acres, you will be next on that list of quarterbacks taken in the first round under Steve Sarkeesian. Arch, you would be next in that line of great quarterbacks. Well, and plus Jake Locker to be coached under Steve Sarkeesian and make it to the NFL. Athens, Georgia, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, they don't compare to Austin, Texas. The food, the water, the weather, the women. We got it all, Arch. But first and foremost, Sark's track record of developing quarterbacks only means one thing. That just like your Uncle Peyton, and just like your Uncle Eli, if you come to the University of Texas, you will be the next quarterback in that family to be drafted in the first round. Whatever you need, Arch, we got it for you. Just call Sark. And if Sark doesn't answer, you can call me, Jonathan Davis, the host of Locked On Longhorns, here at the Locked On Podcast Network. The burnt orange and white would look good on Arch, but are those the colors that he sees himself committing to? We'll find out, but there is one more contestant to hear from. Before we get to that, though, it's time to hear from Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like is your Odyssey an LX or an EX and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer. You got to choose the only website where you can get everything you need cheaper than you'll find it in one of those chain auto parts stores and that is rockauto.com. You got it on your computer, you got it in your pocket, save time and money When you use Rock Auto, go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know exactly who sent you with amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts that your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. We have one final contestant competing for Arch Manning's final rose, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Nick Saban is notorious for being a reserved individual, but will he open up in order to get Arch Manning's final rose and that commitment? Arch Manning, you need to come to the University of Alabama. I'm Luke Robinson with Locked On Bama, and here's why. The University of Alabama doesn't need you. Now, I know that's a strange pitch, but I'm telling you, Alabama doesn't need you, which is a positive. You don't need to go somewhere where the weight of the world will be on your shoulders because of your last name, which is an awesome last name. You guys are the first family of college football. There's no doubt about that. And you've earned it. And uh, you've got a legacy to continue. But you don't want to bear that legacy like an albatross around your neck for your three or four years at your chosen university. If you come to the University of Alabama, I think you'll see very quickly that you will blend in because there'll be a lot of other alphas. There'll be a lot of other dudes that are very, very good. And they know what it's like to to carry the burden of being great and and living up to that five-star billing. And you are the five-star of all five stars. Uh, You were one of the highest rated recruits in, in, in recruiting history, frankly. And when you factor in your last name, it's certainly going to be a lot for you to deal with. And right now at the University of Alabama, you have a coach who is the greatest of all time who's also carrying that burden. Heavy is the crown for him, but he he carries it very well on that straw hat 
Um, Nick Saban does a fabulous job. That's another reason you should come to Alabama because you will have Nick Saban. I can guarantee that if you went to Alabama, you'd definitely be there as long as you are. He's certainly not going to be coaching forever, but if you, Arch Manning, were to come there, I think Nick Saban would certainly stay at least as long as your tenure. There's also the recent quarterback success in Tuscaloosa that you need to factor in. Uh, just think about this. The last four starting quarterbacks in Tuscaloosa, Jalen Hurts, who uh, admittedly he finished his career at Oklahoma, which is fine, but he was only finishing his career at Oklahoma because he was pushed out by Tua Tungvaloa. There's no shame in that whatsoever. That being said, Jalen Hurts is now the starter at the Philadelphia Eagles organization and doing quite well. And he's throwing to another Alabama receiver in Devontae Smith. I should throw that in there. Then there's Tua Tungvaloa who came after him. Tua was a remarkable player in college. He's getting his footing in the NFL, and he's a little help with that offensive line, but he's going to get there. I truly believe that. And he's throwing to another University of Alabama product in Jalen Waddell. So those are the types of receivers you're going to be tossing the pigskin to. Then there was Mac Jones, uh, who finished in the top five of the Heisman voting. Uh, just like Tua, I think, finished number two. Jalen Hurts also finished in the Heisman voting. I should throw that in there. But Mac Jones won a national championship. Um, he had an undefeated season. He went through an entire SEC season and then into the playoffs, defeating Ohio State for the championship eventually. But um, Mac Jones is a starter for the New England Patriots now. And then, of course, there's Bryce Young. Bryce Young won the Heisman Trophy last year, and he would be a starter in the NFL this year if he were eligible. He's not. He could be the number one pick in the draft next year. Those are your last four starting quarterbacks at Alabama. What can you say about the last four starting quarterbacks at the other schools you're considering? I won't even name them out there. I'll just let you do your own research for that one. I believe in you finding that. Um, you're also going to be dealing with NFL players in practice at all times. Just like carrying the burden of greatness, living up to the hype it is one thing. You also are actually going to be on the field with these great players. So you're going to know what it's like to deal with NFL type talent before you ever get to the NFL. How great is that? That is awesome. Yes, it's going to be iron sharpens iron situation here, Arch. You need to go to the University of Alabama and see what that is all about. All you have to do is look at somebody like a Jonathan Allen, who is, uh, he became a literal Saban bot, as I say. And um, he embraced the idea that even though he was a really good player, one of the top 10 players in the country out of high school, he went to Alabama stayed humble, kept his nose to the grindstone, and worked his way into being a number one pick. And he still is incredibly coachable. He understands he still has more to learn, even though he's a fantastic player already in the NFL, just like he was in college. So I think that um, learning from some of your cohorts at the University of Alabama would be something that is very, very positive for you as well. Also want to just throw this in there. Look, your high school, I know this. I just happen to know this that a lot of your high school mates and friends, they go to the University of Alabama. Even though your high school is there in New Orleans, they have a lot of folks that end up at the University of Alabama. Alabama's done a fantastic job of recruiting uh, students from different states uh, like Louisiana, and uh, a lot of your buddies will be there. So you'll fit right in. It'll be comfortable. And trust me on this, Alabama uh, can be a party school if you want it to be. New Orleans, kind of a party town. I think that's what it's known for. So you'll feel right at home. And on top of all this, again, I got to go back to Nick Saban being the greatest of all time. Uh, your your family being the, uh, the first name in college football. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And, um, you know, again, that's why you don't necessarily look at this like Alabama has to have you. They don't. But I think it would be a very mutual, beneficial situation if you were to go there and just think about it you have uh, a, a, a father who was a superstar at Ole Miss you'd have an uncle who was unbelievable at the University of Tennessee and an NFL legend you'd have another NFL legend who was at Ole Miss as another uncle and then you could create your own write your own history at Alabama and you could be the guy that helped ride Nick Saban out into the sunset and there y'all go hand in hand and greatness together while you win, what, three championships? I'm not trying to be uh, optimistic here, but I think that's what it could be. So, Arch, hopefully we'll see you at the University of Alabama. We have heard from all 
three contestants tonight. The defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs, the burnt orange Texas Longhorns, and the reserved but maybe willing to open up Alabama Crimson Tide. Gentlemen, Arch, it is time to award the final rose tonight. When you're ready, who will earn your final rose? <laughs> 